Welcome, welcome one and all. Please have a seat, everybody. Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. The big story. For those of you paying attention to the world outside, the big story continues to be geopolitical intrigue. Russia has massed 150,000 troops on the Ukrainian border, but Putin says they're not invading. It's a real case of will they or they definitely will. Because here's the thing, last night, U.S. intelligence announced that instead of Russia pulling back, like they've claimed, Russia has instead added 7,000 troops along Ukraine's border. You're not fooling anyone, Russia. This reminds me of that scene in The Lord of the Rings. We're actually retreating! Give me some chance! Some people are trying to de-escalate tensions. For example, in neighboring Moldova, a pilot of a passenger plane at Ukraine's border used his flight path to draw the word, relax. <laughs> it's a nice sentiment, but there is a limit to how relaxed I want my pilot to be. Uh, it's your pilot speaking. We've lost both engines, but I am chilling up here in the cockpit. <laughs> Turned off the fasten seatbelt sign because it was harsh in my mellow. We'll have you on the ground in just a couple of seconds. Wave hello to the fire trucks as we skid flaming by them. Speaking of international conflicts, the Olympics. Now, you might remember that after the Russians won gold in team figure skating last week, it was revealed that one of their top competitors had failed a drug test before the games even began. While that case is being appealed, none of the teams are getting their medals, including the Americans who finished second. And as a consolation gift, Team USA will reportedly receive Olympic torches. <laughs> yes, that's the smart thing to do when you've really pissed someone off. <laughs> Hand them a torch. <laughs> Evidently, they were out of Olympic pitchforks. <laughs> a happier moment was provided by the captain of the Japanese women's curling team, Satsuki Fujisawa, the cameras picked up this message she wrote to herself on the back of her hand. I'm a good curler. I have confidence. Let's have fun. Is that nice? That's very sweet. Very sweet message. That's very sweet. Mm. Mm. That message reminds me of my own hand-based self-affirmation. I am good at monologue. I have confidence. <laughs> if found, please return to the Ed Sullivan Theater. <laughs> There's just a little slot. Uh-huh. Yeah, there's a little slot out front. They can just slide me. Uh -huh. Slide the clowns back in. Uh, north of the border, a bunch of Canadian truckers continue to protest vaccine mandates, and we've got an update in our ketchup flavored segment Whoa, Canada! <laughs> Earlier this week, Canada declared a state of emergency, but truckers are still occupying downtown Ottawa, and Ottawa residents have had enough. As you can see in this viral clip of one man confronting the truckers. Just to make sure it's clear. <laughs> you. Shut up. Shut up and go <laughs> yourself. <laughs> you. I don't give a about you. Go the home. No one cares about your bull. Keep in mind. Sure. He's got sure. a lot of amp bombs, isn't he? Woo! Keep in mind, he's Canadian, so that's the polite version. <laughs> but as with anything that pisses people off, American conservatives are all for it. Specifically, my pillow CEO, Mike Lindell, seen here calling 911 to report a horse that's been staring at him. <laughs> Lindell has a plan to support the Canadian truckers, and you'll never guess what it is. Send them a bunch of my pillows. <laughs> okay, you guessed. No, I know what you're asking. You're asking, Steve, will there be enough my pillows to go around? Yes, Gail. Because <laughs> Lindell loaded up a truck with 10,000 pillows, almost as many as on the bed in your great aunt's guest room. <laughs> These, those shams, those shams are not for sleeping. These protesters are camped out in the cold. They need food and fuel, not 10,000 pillows. Mm. In the words of one great Canadian, it's like 10,000 my pillows. When all you need is a knife, it's meeting the man of my dreams, and then meeting his beautiful pillow. <laughs> beautiful song, it's a beautiful song.
Beautiful song. <laughs> it's not just pillows uh, for hard protest and grown ups, there's also some for the kids. We sent a whole truckload of these, to, uh, about, I don't know, a thousand of these, oh, too. These love. are Bible pillows for the kids up there. Uh, we got Noah's Ark and stuff. Yes, Noah's Ark on a pillow. It's perfect for getting your little ones to sleep. <laughs> Bedtime, honey, remember, God will drown you for my sins. <laughs> and spare only the horniest livestock. Good night. <laughs> so, true story. Based on true story. Based on true story. So Lindell loaded up his pillow convoy and headed for the border, where he was immediately turned back because he was not fully vaccinated and not have a negative PCR test. Come on, man! man. Come on! Glad he packed the pillow. He couldn't support the vax mandate protesters because he wasn't fully vaxxed. How can you describe that? Isn't it ironic? Don't you think? Thank you, Dr. Morissette. But Lindell's got a backup plan to smuggle in much-needed pillows. He's going to drop them from the sky <laughs> via helicopter. Okay, so the Canadian border guards are stopping him from driving into the country so he's playing it safe by using a helicopter to violate their airspace. <laughs> Good thing he's got those 10,000 pillows. They can cushion the fall when the Canadian Air Force shoots his ass down. <laughs> Speaking of, they have an Air Force, right? They just strap a pistol to a goose. Speaking of crashes, there's news from the high-flying, low-transparency world of digital investments. And I'll tell you all about it in my new segment, Tales from the Crypto. Ask me to explain blockchain! <laughs> I can't. First up in the crypto crypt, JP Morgan Chase just opened a lounge in the metaverse. Awesome! Because when I heard that there was a virtual world where you can be anything and do anything, my first thought was, boy, I hope I can still go to the bank. <laughs> do the DMV next. <laughs> The virtual lounge is called Onyx, and it's in the virtual version of Tokyo's Harajuku shopping district called Metajuku. Oh, so they just put meta in front of everything to make uh, new words. Let me try. That meta sucks. <laughs> What's it like? What's it like inside the virtual space? Well, a tiger wanders the first floor and a picture of the bank's boss, Jamie Dimon, hangs on the wall. Whoa. That went from cool to lame awful fast. <laughs> it's like saying, happy birthday, I got you a car ride with Jamie Dimon. <laughs> but there's more, because after you enter the lounge, a winding staircase leads to the second floor where a person's avatar can watch experts talk about the crypto market. <laughs> and hopefully another winding staircase that leads to the top floor of the building so your avatar can leap to its death. <laughs> Our... It's not real. It's, it's just... It's, it's an avatar. avatar. Okay, it's I an see. It's just an avatar, yeah. Chris. Our next story centers around former first lady and woman at the book club who hopes you're joking about reading ta Coates next week. <laughs> Melania. Recently, Melania held an auction for a collection of NFTs on the Solana blockchain. Of course, the Solana blockchain is similar to the Ethereum blockchain in that if your Tinder date starts talking about either of them, get out of that Applebee's immediately. <laughs> Leave your coat. You can buy another one. <laughs> the auction was called the Head of State Collection and included this hat, a watercolor of the former First Lady wearing the hat, and a digital artwork NFT of the watercolor of her wearing the hat. What is it with this family and scamming people with hats? <laughs> Now, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> now, the minimum bid uh, was supposed to be about $250,000 paid only in the cryptocurrency of the Solana blockchain. Only problem, between the time the auction was announced and the time that the auction started, that type of crypto plummeted from $170 per token 
to $95 per token. That's going to be confusing for the auctioneer. I got a bid from $500, $500, I don't know, $250. Now it's back at $375. Can I get a bid in real money? Real money. And we got real money. Sold to the man with 75 cents in nickels. <laughs> But despite the currency fluctuations, Melania's hat got a buyer, and the winner was Melania. <laughs> because it turns out the money that won Melania's NFT came from Melania's own digital wallet. It was her own hat, her own watercolor, and her own NFT paid for with her own money. <laughs> it's the circle of grift. Hum, 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 hey. <laughs> We got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Margaret Brennan and Adam Scott.